All right, so as we've been saying, um, we've been learning about the plagues. We've been learning about how they affected Egypt. Um, we've been learning about um, what God was doing through those plagues. We've been learning specifically um, about the plagues. But more than, than anything, I think that has been brand new to most of us is that um, when God brought the plagues, the ten plagues onto Egypt, he was also exposing um, a specific God, um, making a mockery of the Egyptian God, of an Egyptian God um, that was tied to that plague. And so for most of us, we didn't know that. And so it's been really um, a revelation to us, and it's been really interesting, and there's been so much conversation about it. So we want to go back and make sure that if you're just hearing this for the first time, that you know the gods that were attached to or exposed by the plagues um, from the first six, because again, today we're doing seven through nine, and um, and so we're going to uh, we're going to dig deep today. Yes, if today. you remember, Egypt worshipped 114 gods. They were all pagan gods, of course, and, and I love the fact that all of a sudden the one true God, the God of heaven above, stepped onto the scene and began to devastate and destroy the land of Egypt with ten powerful plagues, and each plague was a mockery of that specific God, and we're going to see today how God continues to mock the pagan gods of Egypt. Okay, so we're going to do a super fast recap, like I said, without an explanation of each god. You can find those um, on previous messages. The first plague was, of course, the, um, and uh, this, this is on, but it's not looking. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the first plague was obviously the plague of um, blood, right? And that was uh, exposing the Nile River God Happy. And so, I don't know if you can see the screen or not, but that is Happy, the God Happy. And uh, the second plague was the plague of frogs. And they were everywhere inside their home. That was exposing the goddess of fruitfulness, which was Heket. And uh, the third plague that we talked about was exposing their false god of peace, which was um, God, uh, Geb, the god of the earth, or the god of peace, which was Geb. Um, the fourth plague. You guys, the fourth plague, if you were here last, uh, last week, the fourth plague was the uh, against the god of creation. Uh, they, they named him Kepri, uh, and, and there is his face. Of course, he had a beetle head. Remember that? Uh, the fifth plague was the plague against the livestock, uh, exposing the false god of power and prosperity. His name was Apis. And, of course, the sixth plague that we ended up last week was a plague of boils, Exposing the goddess named Isis. She was thought to bring wholeness and, and healing. She was supposed to be a goddess of medicine. Now today what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, the rest of the plagues that we're going to be speaking about today. We're going to be speaking about the 7th, 8th, and ninth plague. Good catch. The, uh, <laughs> the, the 7th plague is the plague of hell. And I've worked on that word all week just to let you know. Uh, because uh, I say hell and, and uh, hell is as in, as down there and, and hell is falling from the sky. I'm going to be your interpreter this morning. That would be the plague of hail. Hail, not hell, as in heaven and hell, but hail as in the big things that dent your car when it comes out of the sky. But if you are a redneck, that is the same word. <laughs> hail and hail. Hey, hail. Absolutely. Church, the Church of Redness. <laughs> so let's look at Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 through 19. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go, so that they may worship me. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you, and against your officials. Did, did you hear that? Let me say it again. I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people. Amen. So that you will know that there is no one like me in all the earth. You know what I love? I love the fact that God said the kids' gloves are about to come off. 
Amen. No more playing nicely. You, you thought that what was done was bad, but you ain't seen nothing yet. God's about to rain down fury from heaven like they've never, ever seen before. Let's go on. The Bible says, For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose so that I might show you my power and that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and you will not let them go. Let's keep on going. Let me, let me get you to pause real quickly, um, Pastor, if you don't mind, because um, the reason why we are, and, and I love this, um, if you can see the screens, um, you see that those places are underlined with the so that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, if you're just joining us, if, you, if this is the first time you're tuning in to um, Restore Church, you'll want to go back and find a message. We did an entire series on so that. Mm -hmm. And what we, what we determined is every time, and there are many, many times throughout the Word of God, where we find those two words used together, so that. Mm -hmm. And they speak to purpose. Anytime that you see the word so that placed together, it is speaking of purpose. When we do something so that, it's because I'm doing something so that. There is a purpose that I'm doing something. So we see that God has a purpose for these plagues. He's, right. not, just, he's not just pushing around his power. Right. He's not just showing up on the scene and saying, hey, I'm God, and I just right. want you to know it. There's, uh -huh. there's a purpose. There's a so that. So we see a so that, mm -hmm. so that his name would be proclaimed in all of the earth, so that... They would know that your 114 gods that you're worshiping, huh, they ain't all that. Come on. <laughs> right? yeah. So that your gods, you would know that they ain't all that. And we've got to see that there's a purpose for that. Because otherwise, all we're going to do is see God as a big bully. Mm -hmm. And God's not just a big bully. God is not a bully at all. Instead, there's a so that. There's a purpose for this. And the same purpose that God had then with the plagues is the same purpose that we need to see that God has today yes. in what he's doing on the earth. Because I know that we're here in the, the mess that we're in today. I know that we're in the place that we are today. And many of us are scratching our heads going, God, what are you doing? Or what's going on in the earth? Or is this the last days? Or what does this mean? Or do I need to go hide under a bridge somewhere? Can I stop paying my bills now? Okay. Wow. What, do I, what do I do at this point? And we need to understand um, what is the point of all of this. And, 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 and some of us are even asking the question, I've been going in this direction, and now everything's falling apart. Was it all for nothing? Was it all for naught? What, what, what is this about? Is there a purpose? And the answer to that is there's a so that yeah, right, to man. all of it. Right. Nothing's ever for naught in that's God's right. economy, right? right? There's a so that. And there was a so that with the plagues then. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you today that we're going to see that there's a so that for what's going on here today. Right. Yes. And then it was so that they would know that there is no other God yes. that is greater right. than him. Amen. Amen. And so that his name would be proclaimed in all, all the of earth. the earth. And Amen. we're going to see that the so that is great even now. Right? Amen. So that's what we need to see. And that's why it's underlined and that's why I pause the pastor. How many know that every plague was on purpose for a purpose? Yes, sir. Amen. Nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason and lasts for a season, can you say amen? And we're amen. a part of that. Purpose. That's right, absolutely, yeah. today. Because the, the great thing is if, if you fast forward, you find out that God brought them through, amen? He, he drew them in to draw them out, right? And then he brought them out, and they were better off than they were ever before. And I believe, in Jesus' name, the same thing will happen to us when we get through to the other side. Can I get a witness from my amen. amen. All right, let's look at the, the, what the rest of the scripture says. Therefore, this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt. Now, now keep in mind, this is God saying this is going to be the worst that has ever happened before. He said the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded until now. God said, give an order now to bring your livestock 
and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter. You know what I love about God? Even though the, the, he was devastating and destroying the land, he still gave the people an out. Yes. All they had to do was listen to him so they could be protected. But watch what happened. He said, give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter. In other words, a place of protection. Because the hell... Is that right? You're doing so good. The hell <laughs> will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and is still in the field, and they will die. Mm -hmm. God allowed that plague, the plague of hell, he hell, By the time my Lord, it's so hard. <laughs> See, God allowed th this plague of ice falling from the sky come on, come on. Amen. Amen. To, to expose this Egyptian goddess called Newt. Let's look at this picture real quick. Actually, now, now I want you to get it for it's those of you. Not. Now listen, this is a, an awesome visual because here is the goddess Newt, spelled N-U-T. She is stretching out herself over and, and trying to use her body as some type of protection. And the Egyptians believed that she was the goddess of the sky. This is important. Watch this. So here she is stretching out herself and ironically, the god that is laying down on the ground is again the god of the earth. So what it is, they believe that this goddess called Newt, was going to stretch out her body. You can see she's long and lean. Amen? Now she's going to stretch forth and stretch her body out across the sky since she was a, a goddess of the sky. And once again, at the bottom of that is Ged, the god of the earth. In other words, it was her job to protect the earth. Or so they thought. Think about that. So they thought that she was going to protect the ground uh, because she was the goddess of the skies, and once again, she would stretch her body uh, across the earth to protect it. But I love the fact that God got their attention when He rained down hail from heaven and destroyed all of their major crops and even the people and the animals that did not listen nor obey God's commands. Guys, one more time, let me let me bring this to your attention. The people who were killed had a chance to be saved, but they did not listen to God's warning. See, God made everybody who believed in the goddess Newt, once again spelled nut, uh, God made everyone who believed in her look like a nut. Can you say amen? <laughs> amen. See, because... When, when God began to rain down uh, hail from heaven once again and destroyed every single thing by this major hailstorm, they were calling out to the wrong God, mm -hmm. a pagan God, not the all-powerful God. Amen. See, one more time, um, the one true God was showing the Egyptians that their little incompetent God couldn't protect them, mm -hmm. right? Um, that that God didn't have control over the elements that God had created. That's right. Um, that he didn't have dominion over anything. Mm -hmm. That God alone, the one true God, That's right. the one true God, had dominion over all of the land, over all of the sky, over everything in it. And by the way, if you're watching online, um, our, our associate pastor, Andy, is back there and he is, um, you're not able to. Okay, we're going to post, if, you, if, if you're not being able to see these um, gods, we're going, to, um, we're going to try to post these gods on to the comment page. We're going to try to get these on, on there so that you can see them the um, as a visual um, so that you can see them. But I want you to see that what God was doing was this. He was saying, listen, you're a little incompetent God that is supposed to be protecting you and, and the earth, right? Um, I, I want you to see that that your God can't protect you. Your God doesn't have control over anything. I created the skies. I created the elements. I created everything. And I'm showing you right now that by sending hail upon the earth, you don't have control over a thing. That's right. 
Right. You see, control is really just a figment of our imagination, oh, is it God. not? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the thing is, is that right now what's happening is that we have a world of people who are feeling completely out of control. Yeah. Right. We are freaking out, and we're right. stressing out, and we're not knowing what to do. But here's the craziest part. We never had control in the first place. Amen. 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 Right. Do we understand this? Yes. See, much like the Egyptians, they, or should I say we, just thought we had control. Right? right? It's not until a few plagues came in and hit their prosperous country, mm -hmm. and for us, this invisible coronavirus, mm -hmm. this potentially deadly virus that's finally spreading through our world, that all of a sudden we feel like we're losing control. But guys, we've never had control in the first place. Never. Right? right. Never. We've never had control in the first place. And friends, I hate to tell you this. We've never had control. Control's always been a figment of our imagination. It's not until all of a sudden God steps in and says, excuse me, I'm going to remove the veil a little bit here. You never had control. Right. I've always been in control. And I just need you to see that. Yes. Amen. You see, we need to understand that the Egyptians didn't have control. And God sent that plague to let them know it. And perhaps God's stepping in right now to go, hey guys, little wake up call here. You're still not in control. That's right. Every red. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Please, if you've never been looking into our archives, find one. Find the 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 the, the series that says um, temperaments. Yeah, about temperaments that says um, you said this. And I heard that because yeah. it's about temperaments. And as Pastor just said, all the reds are crying because, you see, the red people, the people who are temperament um, red, are they're the control freaks. Mm -hmm. So all the control freaks in the world are going, I don't have control right now. And right. God is going, but you never did. <laughs> and so I want you to understand the Egyptians didn't have control. We don't have control. Right. And our prideful selves, we like to believe that we do. God has always been in control. He will always be the only one in control. Yes. And right here yes. with this plague of hail, he stepped in and he said, listen, your little God right there never had control. Right. And I need you to know right now because, again, what's my so that? My so that is this. My so that is that you would know that I am the only God that has yes. control right. and that right. my name would be proclaimed yes. in all of the earth. And God is stepping into our world right now and saying, guys, I am the one true God in mm -hmm. all of the universe. And I am the only one that has control. And I am desperately asking you and I am desperately extending mercy to you. I have control. I will always be in control. Yes. I hold the world in my hands. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, guys. If that frightens you hmm. in the least bit, then I need you to know that perhaps it's because we don't know him well enough. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Because you see, when we know him well enough, we know that he is a God that is forever able yes. and he is forever faithful yes. and that he is a God that is fully and completely trustworthy Always. and he can totally handle yes. it. Yeah. And then if we don't have our hands on it, it's yes. going to be good. It's going to be great. And it's yeah. actually going to be better. Right. And there is something amazing about being able to say, God, you've got this. You see, right. the let go and let God is far more than a bumper sticker, people. Okay. And the thing is, is that when we learn to live and understand that God's got this and he truly does, we sleep at night and we don't have to be on so many pills. We don't have to, you understand, and, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not coming against you if you have to be on something. The, the fact of the matter is, God says, listen, if that's your starting point, that's fine. If you're in anxiety and, and that's where you live, that's fine. But I want you to understand that I'm the God that has control and I can work with you where you're at and I can help you to understand that you can release some of those things to me release it. and I will help you to find peace. Amen. I will help you to find peace and I will help you to find that place where you can relinquish that control to me and I will help you to breathe. Thank you. I will help you to live in peace. And I will help you to understand that in my presence, there is fullness yes, of joy. Right, yes. A joy that the world can't give you and the world can't take away. Yes. And it's a joy that you haven't felt in a really, really long time. 
That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. And it's what you're searching for in everything that's not giving you anything. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. See, if it frightens us, it's because we don't know God. And here's what we are are being assured of: no matter what it looks like, God is in control. Yes. Yes. Guys, He said it back in Exodus nine, and I want you to remember: this is what He said. God desires us to what? Know that there is none like Him in all the earth. That's right. And He wants to show His power. That his name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Remember, that is his purpose for all of these plagues. It's not just to push around himself. It's, it's to say, listen, there's none like me in all the earth. Amen. You guys are missing it. There's none like me in all the earth. That's right. Amen. That's right. You got all your gods. You got all your stuff. You got all your possessions. You only let me in when you really, really need something. Mm -hmm. You push me back out when you don't. Does that sound Come familiar? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Wow. And I want to show you my power because it's a power that's available to you. That's right. And I want my name proclaimed in all the earth. That's what he's doing now. He wants to show himself to the world. He wants to prove himself as the one and only true God. Guys, we got to trust him. We've got to learn to breathe through this difficult time. God yes. wants to show himself mm -hmm. as the one true God. And here is the amazing thing that I want you to remember. We are not in control, but we are deeply loved by the one who is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Come, on. Yes. Come on, guys. Yes. There might be yes. eight of you, but let's yes. clap yes. Yes. I am not in control, but I am deeply loved by the one who is. Yes. yes. And that's how we sleep at night. And that's how we have that peace. And that's how we can say, I don't... I don't have to be in control because I know that I am deeply loved. And, and you know what? My plans are all screwed up right now. And I was going in this direction and I had a perfect plan. So I thought, and I thought that that plan was even written by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come, on. Come on. I was sitting yeah. outside in my, uh, around my pool last night with my son who had a perfect plan written by God. I mean, we had prayed about it. We knew that God had put a plan together for him to go out to Kansas and play football. We knew that that was his recruiting. His spring semester was his recruiting time. And guess what? Hmm. He is home right now. He's going to be on a plane in four hours. Go back to get to for his spring season in football to be recruited to get to his D1 school so he can keep on going. And guess what? Spring season just got canceled. He's yep. done. He and every other student out there is not going back. To his, to his spring season. And, and they're not going back to school. And many se seniors aren't even graduating. And many people who have their plans in place are not going back. And they don't know what is next for them. And many people aren't going back to their jobs. And many people are being laid off after 30 years and 20 years at a corporation. And, and some people in our church just got laid off for the next four weeks. And they don't know how they're going to make their bills for the next for the right. next month. And, and, right. and many people are yeah. right now not knowing what they're going to do or how they're even going to take care of their kids because they're not going back to school. And there's so many uncertainty. But I'm going to have you understand today that we are not in control. That's Come right. Come on. Right. And that scares some of us mm. so badly. But this is how we can sleep. Because we know that we are so deeply loved by the one who is. That's right. Amen. God, I don't know what's going on. I thought the plan was written by you. But all of a sudden, somehow, I don't know what the plan is anymore. But I can know this. That I am so incredibly deeply loved by you. Mm -hmm. And I know that if you love me and if you've got me, that I'm going to be more than okay. Yes. Because you yes. are going to somehow reroute that GPS. Yes. And you're going to yes. get me there anyways. Yes. Right, and that was the promise. <clears throat> yes. that I, I spoke to Cole last night, and I'm speaking to you right now. God can reroute that GPS yes. and get us all yes, there he anyways. Yes, he Amen. Yes, he He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Amen. Yes, he can. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded how awesome it was in the New Testament when the apostles and, and Jesus were in the boat trying to go to the other side. And all of a sudden, a storm came out of nowhere. Guys, we're in the middle of a storm. Can you say yes. amen? amen? And I love the fact that the amen. peace speaker was in the boat, the one that made the earth, the water, and even the uh, the boat that the yeah. apostles were in. Yeah. He was in the right place at the right time, amen? amen. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> you know why? Because he knew that everything was going to be all right. Yes. All right. So they woke him up, and he looked at the, 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 the storm. He saw the waves. He saw, and he felt the wind, he saw everything, and, and felt their fear. But then all of a sudden, at the perfect timing, Jesus said, peace, be still. The waves stopped crashing, the wind stopped blowing. 
the thunder and the lightning ceased, and the Bible says that it was clear as day so they could sail through to the other side. Friend, can I tell you today that, that even though we might be in the midst of a storm, yeah. we've got the peace yes, speaker right. living on the inside right. of us. Amen. So that when everything seems to go the wrong way, trust and believe that God will make it go the right, right. way. Yes, Amen. 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 All right, we've got to hurry. Let, let's look at the eighth plague. Uh, that was a freebie, by the way. Let's look at the eighth plague, the plague of locusts. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 10, verses 1 through 6, then the Lord said to Moses, Go, watch this, in faith to Pharaoh. For I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his officials. Here's that word again. So that, so that I may perform these signs of mine among them. That you may tell your children and your grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians. And how I performed my signs among them. And that you may know that I am the Lord. All right, guys, um, I, I, I have in my notes that I, I wanted to, to pause again here. And then and, and the reason, and I, I love Pastor so much because he knows that um, if I have any giftings, it's the application part. And, and there's so much right here that just jumped out at me when I read it. And I want you to see this because I, I, want, you to, I want you to see this because I think, I, I think that many of us do this. And somebody needs this this morning. Where it says, go in faith to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. Yes. yes. Yep. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, go in faith, for I have hardened his heart. He already knows what he's That's right. Okay, so here's the thing. Don't many of us go, okay, God, so listen. So I know that you're telling me to go talk to Bobby Sue. <laughs> and I'll go. But I need you to prepare their hearts mm -hmm. to receive me. Right. And Lord, when when you're done preparing their heart to receive me, then I'll go. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay, sometimes it just doesn't work that way. That's right. Yeah. Because in this instance, and sometimes God tells us to go talk to someone or to go into a circumstance that God already knows is still too hard to deal with, but he says go anyway. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. I'm sorry, huh? <laughs> Go in faith. Go right. I've made the road difficult for you, and they won't receive you. Right. But, but go ahead and go. Go anyway. Yes, ma'am. Did you get that? Yes. Uh -huh. And guess what's actually in here again? A so that. It says, go in faith, for I have hardened his heart, so that. Mm -hmm. Wait, so there's a purpose yeah. when God tells you to go into a difficult situation mm -hmm. and he hasn't gone before you to prepare the way and make it easy for you, mm -hmm. but he still tells you to go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes God tells you to go in faith and to do it even though it's not going to work in your favor anyways. Yeah. Like, like, come on. It still means yeah. that you and me need to get off our tail and go, go. anyways. Preach. Right. How many times have we said, okay, God, I'll go, but prepare their heart Come on. Yep. so that they'll receive me? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. God said, so that I might perform my signs among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to show out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God asks us to go even though they're not going to receive you because God's still going to show out for us. All the other people that are watching. That's right, man. That Amen. person that you're going to may not receive you. Mm -hmm. right. But God still has a so that. It still has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Come on. And it may not be easy, but he still says, go. go. Somebody needs that this morning. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Because you see, we're in a situation right now where we're having to go in faith. And the situation is still hard. Come on. Come on. And the people around us are still hardened to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this situation with this virus is, for some of us, the people around us, it's just making them harder against God. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. And then God says, all right, I need you to go and tell them about me. And you're like, well, then prepare their heart, God. And he goes, no. 
Just do it anyways. Amen. See, we are not to tell God how he's going to do Come things. On. Yes. Come on. We just need to go in faith even if he still hardened the circumstance before us. We just need to go. That's right. Because it's a so that situation, so that I may perform these things, that they may know that I'm God. We've got to remember, it's his prerogative how he wants to move upon the earth. That's right. Yeah. If he wants to send this virus and he wants to step into the scene and he wants to put our plans on hold so that he can be God, we've got to step back and say, all right, go ahead, be God. I'm cool. That's right. <laughs> yes. we, go ahead. Amen. And we've got to go in faith. And when those around us seem not to be listening, and when and when they're not receiving us, we've got to understand that we can't go, God, why did you do that? It doesn't matter why God did what God did. God's God. Mm -hmm. And we've got to understand that this is God's stage to perform on. Come on. That's right. that's good. Come on. Because that's what he said. How I perform my signs among them. Mm -hmm. He is performing right now. That's right. I hate to say that, but he is performing his signs and wonders before people. Mm -hmm. He is going to step onto this scene and he is going to perform his signs and wonders. And we're going to let him perform his signs and wonders. And he's going to uh, uh, prove himself and he's going to perform himself. Mm -hmm. And he's going to show himself faithful and he's going to do his thing. That's right. <laughs> and you and I just need to step back and let God be God. Amen. And we've got to be yes. in total faith right now and right. say, God, I know that at the end of this thing, you're going to see us through. That's yes. right. If we lost our job in the midst of it, you're, you're a good enough God. that You got us the first one. You'll get us another one. Yes. Come on. He's God, still the God of provision. Amen. Yes. Amen. That God, whatever happens at the end of this thing, I know that you are my God and that you are faithful and you have never, never, never. Seen the righteous forsaken. Right. I have never seen the righteous That's forsaken right. or a seed begging for bread. And I know that you're going to take care of me. You be God. Perform what you will. Mm -hmm. And Lord, do what you're going to do. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, guys, let's get back to the plague quickly. The plague of locusts. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Wow. Let my people go so they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. Keep in mind that the, the plague of hail had, had just devastated the land. So then Moses wanted to say to Pharaoh, they will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. <laughs> they will devour what little you have left after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. Amen. Remember what happened to the frogs? The frogs filled their houses. Remember that? Yeah. Here's what the Bible says about the locusts. They will fill your houses. Mm. See, they're not only only they're not only going to be in the ground, they're going to be inside of their houses. And for somebody like me that thinks grasshoppers are from the devil. <laughs> The only thing he's scared Come on, guys. Can I tell you today that that must have been a living hell? Can I yeah. get away from somebody? That would be H-E-double-L. Absolutely. So the Bible says they will fill your houses and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your parents nor your ancestors have ever seen from the day they settled in this land till now. Wow. Then Moses turned and he left Pharaoh. I love that he My just God. turned, he spun on his heels and said, I'm done talking, I'm out of here. Amen. Now see, here's what happened. This was uh, and it, it, this was God exposing another pagan god of Egypt. His name was Serapia. Here is a picture of this god right here. And you know, I, I love the fact that I, I had to dig deep on this and I found out that the major job of this pagan deity was actually to protect them from a locust. How crazy is that? This is a, once again, a proverbial punch in the face. Can, I, can you say amen to all the pagan gods of, of Egypt because they thought this particular god was going to protect them from locusts. And God said, no, nobody or anything can protect you from my hand and from my power. Can you say amen? Amen. Once amen. again, they were about to see firsthand that a pagan God has no power. Mm -hmm. That a pagan God cannot protect. 
Only the all-powerful God of heaven above can protect his own people, amen? Because the Bible goes on to say that though the land of Egypt will be devastated by the, these locusts, that down in the land of Goshen where God's people were, there was not one locust found. Can I tell you today, there was like a divine divide, a separation, if you will, between the Egyptians and the Israelites because God's hand of protection was applied to his people. Can I tell you today, the same thing that happened then is still going to happen yeah. today. God's hand of protection yeah. will be applied yeah. to his people. Yeah. Let's look at the next verse. I love this verse. I actually kind of find this comical. Chapter 10, verse 7, Pharaoh's officials came to him and said, How long will this man, Moses, be a snare to us? Let the people go so they may worship the Lord their God. They went on to say, Don't you realize that Egypt is ruined? Today they would say, Come on, dude. Man, we got to understand, it's done. Egypt is ruined. Listen, this is a major understatement. Mm -hmm. Think about this. They only thought the land was ruined. Right. They hadn't seen anything yet. No. Because the Bible says what the hell left behind, the locusts were about to take. Amen. Yeah. Pharaoh was not only hard-hearted, he was hard-headed. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? All right, let's look at what the Bible says. Exodus chapter 10, verses 12 through 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt so that locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched his staff over Egypt, and I love what happened. The Bible says, And the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. Think about it. They rode the wind. And God purposely had a plan to bring the locusts into the land. The Bible says they invaded all Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. The Bible says they covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail. Everything growing in the fields and on the fruit trees. Nothing green remained on tree or plant in all of the land of Egypt. Wow. The kids' gloves are off. <laughs> Guys, here's the crazy thing. Um, there are plagues of locusts swarming in Africa and in the Middle East doing some major damage right now. Look at that. A swarm containing an estimated 2 billion locusts. Um, is recorded in Kenya right now. Look at that. Mm. Whoa. Insane. Mm. Insane. That's, that's today. That's, that's now. Yeah. That's now. Um, Worst place in the world for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're going to look at Serapia again because this is their pagan god. This is um, when God brought the plague of locusts, this is what God was exposing, was this God. So we need to understand something real quickly. When God decided, when Pastor was saying that the kid gloves are coming off, um, I've extended mercy to you. And, and just, we did an Old Testament class. We just wrapped up eight weeks of an Old Testament class. And what we understood is that what it did for most of us that took that class was that it, it helped us understand that the God of the Old Testament, sometimes we think of the God of the Old Testament as, as, as that, that mean God. Right, and then and then we have Jesus in the New Testament, and He's the one that brought grace. Right, and so what it did was it helped us really to to identify God of the Old Testament is not this mean God, but a God of mercy, really, because He was a God that continued that no matter how much they continued, um, whether it was the children of Israel or even the Egyptians or whether it was the the, the enemy against God, right. that God was a God of mercy that just continued. To um, that God just continued to pour out his mercy upon them. And here we see that, that here God is again going, listen, <laughs> I'm giving you another shot. Let my people go. And so he comes back to them. And, and what we need to understand here.
here is that when God's bringing this locust and pastor says the kid gloves are about to come off, I could have annihilated you by now, but here's the deal. I'm giving you another chance and you keep holding on to something. So let me just have you identify what locusts are about. If we can understand why God's finally sending locusts, we have to understand that locusts are very symbolic in the word of God. Locusts are miraculously produced, like in Exodus 10. They're miraculously produced, and they come in with wind, right? Um, and they're usually sent as a judgment, like in Deuteronomy 28. Spiritually speaking, in the Bible, locusts represent death, destruction, and a total annihilation of anything that makes life good in a culture or society. Um, they typically represent judgment of God on a particular city or culture. And, and they basically represent um, wiping out whatever's left standing. Mm. Mm. In other words, whatever the hail mm -hmm. didn't wipe out, whatever you're left holding on to, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's coming for that. It's coming for that. Oh, okay. That's right. Sometimes God's got to pry that thing out of our hand, even though he said, what are you doing? Everything's falling apart around you, and you still have this thing left in your hand. Serapia, this God right here, was the God that was supposed to protect them from locusts. Let me say it this way. This was the God that was supposed to protect them from death, destruction, and the judgment of the one true God. Mm. Mm. Let me say that again. This minuscule little God was supposed to protect them from the judgment of the one true God. Mm. <laughs> say it. Oh, Nothing. Mm -mm. If we choose and decide to rebel against God and to say, I'm keeping this, I don't care what you say, I'm digging my heels in, and I'm doing it my way, nothing, 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 nothing can protect us from the judgment of the one true God. That's good. Amen. And it's not because God hates us, because God is a God that just wants to push himself around. It's because God is a God of mercy and continues. Right. There is a reason why locusts are this far down on the list. That's right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> That's right. It's because it continues to be our choice that That's says, right. God, I don't want you. I don't need you. Wow. Mind you, you gave me life. Hmm. You created me. Wow. You, blow you blew breath into my lungs. You bring the sun up every day. You, you cause everything in my body to function every single morning. You give me life every single day. Right, right. You've given me everything that I have. Everything that I have is because of you. Every gift, the job, the everything, everything I have is because of you. Yes. But I need you to step off now because I don't need you. I'm good. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. But then at the same time, for us to be so prideful as to say and arrogant as to say we don't need him that's why it's so far down the list it's God saying but you do that's right mm -hmm. but you do yes and so this was the God that was supposed to protect them again not from mere locusts but protect them from the judgment mm -hmm. of the one true God who has been trying to get in there into their lives as the one true God of their lives all along you know it, it amazed me that, that God continued to pour mercy upon every single plague uh, they, they had an opportunity every single plague brought them a choice to change but what happened they continued to harden their heart and now we know that we do the same thing every time God speaks to us amen yes. And see, with this particular plague of the locusts that God was sending them, as well as us today, the message that whatever we're still holding on to, we need to let go of. Come on, Pastor. Listen, we 
no matter how we we live in this 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 world that we for some reason we think that we're still in control of things. I love what Pastor Jennifer said a few minutes ago. It is a figment of our imagination that we actually think that we are in control. But here's what God wants us to realize. He's the one in charge. Yes. Yes. Not you, not me. Amen. And so what he's trying to do is get us to let go of what we have left trying to hold on to. Remember, when the hailstorm wiped nearly everything out, literally, the only thing that was left, and all of a sudden, Pharaoh's guards once again came to Pharaoh and said, Egypt is already ruined. Let it go. But instead of letting it go, Pharaoh squeezed the reins even tighter. And he continued to hold on. So you know what happened? God sent the locust. Right? That final message to let Pharaoh know that nothing is going to protect you from my judgment. I am in control. Amen. 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 You know that God's people in Goshen were protected from the destruction of the plagues. And as long as we stay under his covering, as long as we stay close to God, he will see us through this plague as well. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so we can be encouraged today that he is the one true God and he yes. will protect us from impending destruction and judgment if we stay close to him. The ninth plague, the final plague we'll talk about today is found in Exodus 10, 21 through 23. It is the plague of darkness. Let's take a look at that real quickly. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and total darkness covered all the land of Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they Lived. Mm. Guys, this third, this this ninth plague, the third one we're going to be talking about today. This plague actually exposed the Egyptian god named Re. If we have a picture of Re, let's look at him quickly. Now, Re had the body of a man, as you can, as you can see, and also he had the head of a falcon. He wore a sun disc on his head and actually had a cobra wrapped around it. The Egyptians believed that this God was the creator of the universe. They believed that He was the giver of life. He was the sun God. They believed that the sun uh, was responsible for giving life. Therefore, He was worshipped as a deity because they thought that He was the one that gave life since He was the sun god. So let me ask you a question today. How did God humiliate the sun god? <laughs> By taking away the sun shine. Can you say amen? amen. Yes. How does God defeat the sun god, this pagan deity? By taking away the sun, uh, not allowing it to shine, so the land will be dark for three solid days. Once again, I love the fact that God is showing up. Showing out and showing off. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen. God is showing that He is Amen. greater than the sun god Ray and even the sun in the sky. I'm reminded that the Bible says in Genesis 1.16 that it was God Himself that created the sun. And if God created it, it means that He controls it and He can make it shine where and when He wants it to. Amen? Amen. Now, according to Egyptian... Uh, studies we find out that that besides Pharaoh, that Ray was the most worshipped God in all of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at this darkness real quickly. This darkness that the Bible is talking about was a complete absence of light. The Bible says this darkness was so deep that you could actually feel this darkness. Wow. Kind of reminds you of when it's real foggy outside. You can feel the dense, heavy fog on your skin. More than likely, that's exactly like this darkness had felt. Wow. Because how many of you know that if you've ever been in a dark place, that, that darkness, when darkness comes, it brings depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it brings feelings of hopelessness and 
feelings of helplessness. And, but on the flip side, we also find that the darkness is a sign of death. And just like the locust, it is a sign of judgment. See, this darkness, much like we are feeling now. Wow. Listen, while it might not be dark on the outside, we know because of everything going around on the outside, some of us, if we're not careful, we feel dark on the inside. Yes, sir. Dark with doubt. Yes, sir. Dark with despair. Uh -huh. Dark with worry about not knowing what our future may hold. But guys, I've got some good news for you. Good news. We might not know what the future holds, but we're the church. We know who yes. holds the future. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I love the fact that, that even in the midst of everything that, that was happening in Egypt, God stepped on to the scene when the Egyptians refused to see and acknowledge Him as the one true God. Right. And all of a sudden, God shut down the light wow. of the sun, <laughs> shutting out and, 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 and blocking their so-called God <laughs> to prove once and again that only He had the light that can light up the darkness, yes. not only in their lives, yes. but in our lives too. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 I love that in Psalm 18 and 28 it says this, You, O God, are the lamp who lights my way. Yeah. Mm. The eternal God lights up my darkness. Thank God. Guys, it was then through this darkness, through this three-day darkness, through this plague, that God was saying, your God is nothing. I am the one that lights up the darkness. Mm -hmm. He exposed that God. And today, we find ourselves, as Pastor said, living in darkness. Living in uncertain times, scary times. And here's what we need to go back to. And I promised you that we would see when we left here that there is a so that, that there is a purpose, that God, we're living in uncertain times, scary times. We're living in darkness right now. What's going on? What do we do? There was a so that then and there's a so that now. It is the same, guys. It is this. He is still wanting us. To know that there is none like him in all the earth. Amen. Amen. He wants to show his power that his name might be glorified and proclaimed in all, all of the earth. earth. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 That is that was then with the plagues his purpose. It is now his purpose for what's going on in this present darkness yes. that we are facing. He was the one that was showing Pharaoh in Egypt that he was the light in and of that world. And he's trying to remind us today. Let's look at Matthew 5, 14. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Did you catch that? Yes. You fast forward one time, Jesus in, in the synagogue during the during a feast, he said, I am the light of the world. Then you fast forward later in his ministry, he says, we are the light of the world. Because now is the time that he has ordained himself to show right in our lives. Because if he's living in us, if we have the light in us, then we are the light of of the world in this dark and this dreary place. And it is time for you and I to let our light shine. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. He exposed that God then and said, I am the light. And guys, now if you have any doubt what's going on, he's still trying to show himself. He's still trying to perform on this stage. <laughs> And he is trying to remind us that right here, right now, if there is ever a time that we can shine, it's now. Yes. And guys, we're going to wrap this up by saying this, that if there is ever a time to remember this, that the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is in you and in me. Come on, Mr. Amen. Right? Amen. The broken world is waiting in darkness, and they are waiting for the light that's in you and that is in me.
And guys, I know that sometimes that it's hard. I know sometimes that as everything that's happening with this virus and, and everything that's happening on our jobs and everything that's happening with the plans that we've made and everything that's happening around us and everything that's happening with our children and everything that's happening with with the things that, that well-laid plans, right? And, mm -hmm. and what's going on, Lord? And this is the time that we've got to remember that he's still in control, that he's stepping onto the scene to remind people that he is the one true God that has all control. You know, I, 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 can, I, can, I can only think that the children of Israel sat back while all of it was happening with the plagues. And they had at least enough to know that with every plague that came in, they at least had the confidence to know. And they at least had the understanding enough to know, okay, I know what's going on here. Think about that. I totally know what's going on here. This is scary. It's getting real in a very big way. Mm -hmm. But I know what's happening here. If there is ever a time that as God's children, we should be able to step back and go, I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. It's right now. This is the time that we should not be freaking out. This is the time that we should be able to see it all coming, going, ah, a plague. I got it. I know what's going on here. God is showing himself to be the one true God over all the gods this world has taken. And my God is showing himself Powerful because he wants to be proclaimed in all of the earth. Yes, yes. And it may be getting dark out there. And it may be getting scary out there. And it may be shaking so much that it's shaking my own personal belongings. But that's okay. Because I know that I sit here in Goshen. And that even though... I may feel the rumbling and it may be some things falling off my own walls. I know that he's going to take care of me. Yes. Because I'm his people. Yes. And I know what's happening right now. Yes. And when it's all said and done, he's leading me to where I need to go and I do not have to fear. See, guys, if there's ever a time that we need to understand, don't forget in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. Yes. Yes. Don't forget in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. If when it was light and when it was good and when everything was fine and hunky-dory, yes. yes. you could hear him and see him and yes. know him and understand what he was doing, and you were like, oh, God is good. Mm -hmm. Don't forget in the darkness what God showed you in the light, what God told you in the light. Do not forget. Yes. Because he is the same God. And here's the deal, guys. To trust God in the light is nothing. But to trust God in the dark, oh, that is faith. Amen. That <laughs> is faith, my friend. Yes. To trust God in the light is nothing. To trust Him in the dark, oh, that is faith. That is faith. That is true faith. Count it testing. Count it strengthening. Count it whatever you want, but count it. Please count it. Yes. This, this is where it all gets real. Yes. Where your faith is counting the most. And when 
every day. The name of Jesus. The one that the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord of all. We call upon the name of Jesus. That name of demons tremble and devils run the opposite direction. Sickness has no name and power of his presence. We call upon that name. Because we know that under his wing, we will find a refuge. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong power. And they that run into it will be saved. Lord, thank you for your protected hand being applied to your people. We believe in the name of Jesus that there was a divine divide that protected Israel from Egypt. God, we speak that the life of every believer in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're in control. We thank you, God, that you're more than enough. And when we struggle and we slip and we stumble, that you're there with your outstretched arm to take us up, to dust us off, to allow us to keep on moving on. God, we give you praise, Lord, to all. In Jesus' name, we pray. Guys, I'm going to read you something tonight real quickly. I want to read you a couple of verses for those of you that are not here today, maybe tuning in. I want to read you four or five verses that deal with fear. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. David said in Psalms 56 and 3, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. John 14, 27, Peace is what I leave with you. Come on, peace. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Last one, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Guys, can I tell you today, the Lord knows what we're going through. And he wants to take away that fear from us so that we can walk in faith, not fear. Faith over fear. Amen? Amen. Guys, I want you to leave here and I want you to walk with your head held up high because you know that the Prince of Peace is in you. And though we're in dark times, I want you to let your light shine for all the world to see. Amen? Gonna be a great week. In Jesus' name.
that because we believe in Jesus Christ, that we can become part of the family of God. That's what makes us children of God. And that's an important distinction. Because today, in order to be under that covering, we have to be able to say that I believe not in God, but I believe in Jesus Christ. I put my faith and my hope in Him. That He is my Redeemer. That He is my everything. And so our hope today is that if you're watching online or if you're here today, that you put your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ, the one that died upon the cross and rose again on the third day. Because that's how we become part of the family of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 If you say, well, well okay, so, I, uh, so what does that mean? That means that there's an ABC to that. That's right. And it's super simple. There's an ABC. And here's the ABC. I say the ABC because it's the easiest thing that I understood it when I stood in Japan at the Tokyo Dome when I was 19 years old and living in Japan as a Disney princess. I was raised in church all of my life and I knew about God, but I didn't understand that Jesus Christ died upon a cross for me. That he was raised from the dead so that I might be raised up with him. That his blood would be enough to wash me of my sins and my shame and all the junk from my past so that I could have a brand new life. And it was there that I heard about Jesus Christ that God loved me so much that he gave his son for me that I might be redeemed yes. that's where John 3.16 comes from, it's not just the verse that Tim Tebow wrote on his face when he played ball that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should have eternal life, so when I heard about that when I heard about Jesus, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I said, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and give me a brand new start. See, the ABC is simple. A, admit that you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. How? How do we know that? Because we've all fallen short of God's glory. See, God has a standard. It's holiness. You and I, no matter what we do, no matter how good we are, no matter how good we are, we can't, we can't match that standard of holiness. No matter what we do, no matter what kind of good person we are, there's no such thing. There's holiness and then there's good person. There's a chasm between there. And only the cross of Jesus Christ can bridge that gap. So the A is admit that you're a sinner. That's easy. I'm a sinner. I screw up daily. The B part is the B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died upon a cross, that His blood shed would wash me of my sins. That's right. And then the C part is confess. Confess it with your mouth. That's right. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And that I believe in Him, and that I should have eternal life. A, admit I'm a sinner. B, believe in Jesus Christ. C, confess it with my mouth. ABC. That's easy. ABC. You go, I just figured out how to lead my co-worker to Jesus Christ. There you go. Amen. ABC. Amen. ABC. Admit that we're sinners. B, believe in Jesus Christ. C, confess it with your mouth. So if you're here today or you're watching and you say, I want to invite Jesus into my life. I want a brand new start. I want all the sin, all the shame, all the junk, everything that I've collected. I want to give it to Jesus. And I want to be born again. I want to start over. I want to draw a line in the sand and I want to start over. And do it right here and now. A, B, C. Admit that you're a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. But I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. And I accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. I confess that right now, right here. Save me. I am yours and you are mine. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you